it, it's always gravitating towards feminine control. I want to speak very briefly about the lie of toxic masculinity. Recently, there was a comment thread on a Dr. K video that has toxic masculinity in the title. You can probably find that video very easily. I basically left a main comment saying that toxic masculinity is BS, end of story, and you shouldn't use the language of oppressors. I don't want to get too deep into that language of oppressors thing right now, but this is my current thought on it. Someone said that toxic masculinity, that while they agreed that the terminology was unfortunate, that the concept behind it still stands and is still important. So my response to that was, no, no it's not. You can't say that the terminology, toxic masculinity, is unfortunate but the concept behind it is okay. They are intertwined because toxic masculinity inherently implies that being male is bad. Now, the problem is that they use flowery definitions. They use nice, cushy definitions to try and make this to toxic masculinity thing seem like it's not a big deal, like it's just some sort of positive thing. And this gets a little bit deeper into the whole weird trend of people using positivity to shame other people. It's a big problem with some of these uh, internet psychologist type videos like what Dr. K, Healthy Gamer GG, does. You get a lot of people in the comments especially, they will use positivity to put down other people. You can put people down using positivity. Yes, I know that sounds just absolutely bizarre, does it not? Oh my God. But it is true. You can use positivity to put people down. You can say things to people that are meant to disparage them in some way, but that smell positive, that carry a good connotation. It, it's basically like the uh, stereotypical woman in the neighborhood who's nice to everyone, but behind their back is a backstabber. It's kind of like that, except it's a bit more public and the backstabbing is done with a smile. They'll come at you saying that, oh, well, maybe you think that because you have some negativity in your life. Do you want to talk about it? Or otherwise just implying that your intention behind this disagreement, somehow this is a problem with you. You think this way because someone hurt you. It's who hurt you. That's actually, it's amazing how well that boils down to who hurt you, who hurt you, that stupid who hurt you thing, where rather than addressing what you say, they just go, you're damaged, and that's it. It's just an insult, but it's a positive insult. Who hurt you? The implication is, it's not your fault you're stupid. It's not your fault that your brain doesn't work right. It's not your fault your thoughts are not correct. It's not your fault you don't agree with me. You're just, someone hurt you. There's, some, there's something toxic that's influencing you. There's an external factor. There's no blame, you see? This is, this is the weird thing about it. There's no blame directly on you. Because of someone else's fault, usually society, someone else's fault, someone, some nebulous other party's bad actions, okay? You think wrong. Something's wrong with you because of someone else. It's not your fault, but you're still damaged goods. But they don't say the part about the damaged goods. They just say, this other thing must have made you suffer. Do you want to get your pain out? But what it's really trying to do is use this sort of floaty nice term that says, you're not responsible for thinking wrong. Do you want to talk about it so I can get you to think right? So you can frame these things positively, but have a negative impact. Because the implication is still, something's wrong with you. You don't think like I do, something's wrong with you. That's the way that the toxic masculinity thing works. Because the definition you'll get if you ask someone who tries to pull this positivity as negativity crap is going to be something along the lines of toxic masculinity is the society's negative expectations of what men should be. If they blame it on society, then you shouldn't feel threatened. Even though you are a man and the expectations are supposed to be on you and technically the person giving you that definition would be society 
to you. And that's the problem with it, is that it's sort of a misunderstanding of causation there. They're not articulating the way that it's actually used. It, when you get back to it, when you, when you look at toxic masculinity and the way that it's actually applied, it doesn't fit the definition of society expects things of men that are unhealthy. It's more along the lines of men are inherently bad and that's why men behave this way and they use society as a scapegoat. What it really is is they're saying men are bad. It really is men are bad. Men are bad. All men are bad. That's all that toxic masculinity really is, is that men are bad because they're men. It's sexism. It's cloaked sexism because they wear the veneer. They wear that, that facade, if you will. Oh, we're just trying to help you not be, you know, not have toxic thoughts and feelings. We're trying to help you behave better. But it's the same things like the polite society. The same thing as, say, uh, censoring, you know, your speech as in like say curse words, right? Why are you not allowed to say curse words? It's not that the words inherently have any power that wasn't assigned to them by the listener. The listener learns, perhaps through societal influence, they learn what the word should mean to them, but ultimately the listener has the choice to interpret the word the way they want, to allow the word to affect them the way they want. Toxic masculinity basically works the same way as trying to tell you you can't curse in public, that's not very nice. The assumption is that masculinity is toxic. I'm almost talking in circles on this. It actually is such a simple freaking concept. I don't understand how anybody does not understand this. But apparently a lot of them do. Apparently a lot of them buy into this. This notion that so men are socialized to be bad people. But somehow that's not a problem for the men that the men shouldn't feel bad about that. It's basically a prelude to a struggle session so that you can tell people how bad you are and then redeem yourself by changing to be the way they want you to be. We should not accept the premise in the first place. Perhaps we should recognize that masculinity is not inherently toxic. There are a lot of traits of masculinity that are the reason that that camera exists, that the website you're watching this on exists, that if it were not for masculinity, you would not have any of this stuff that you're using right now to watch this video and eat popcorn and chew on cookies and whatever, you know, you wouldn't have all this entertainment if you didn't have masculinity. Masculinity includes a lot of things that are positive. Now, granted, there are bad effects that are caused by some of the stupid expectations on men. That's not a masculine problem, that's a society problem. If you're gonna blame it on society, you don't call it toxic masculinity. You need to call it a toxic society. And, if we're going to be completely honest, who in this society is causing all of this toxicity? It's not the men. It's not the masculine people that are causing the toxicity. It's the people telling them how to be. Is it men telling other men how to be? Arguably, since the education system in the United States is almost entirely women because any man who would want to be a teacher is clearly a chain pedophile. It's women. Women run the world by telling men what to do. Women tell men how they should behave. Women dictate men's behavior and expectations. Women are the one who tell men that they're not good enough. In fact, if you want, you can go to any dating site right now. Go to any dating site. Look at some 20-something-year-old woman's dating profile. Just, just skim through them. You will see a laundry list of expectations. You will find outspoken feminists with ACAB in their profile and Black Lives Matter and Antifa stuff and all this crap. Feminism, you, have, you, know, you need to be intersectional, but I also want tall, dark, and handsome and stereotypically masculine and manly. It's women that put the toxic expectations upon other men. It's also women that put toxic expectations on other women. At this point, American society doesn't have men telling much of anyone to do anything. It is women that run this country at this point. The men are basically just along for the ride. There are a few ambitious men that run companies, but even those men, what do they do? They're CEOs or whatever. They're lone wolves. They're not telling other people what to do. Because even if you've got Jack Dorsey at Twitter. Just as an example, he's a man, he's rich, stupidly rich. Who is it that's doing all the Twitter censorship? It's not Jack Dorsey. 
It's not a boardroom full of white men. It's a bunch of, a bunch of intersectional feminists, you know, fem identifying women, all people that are on this leftist gender fluidity slash women leaning side of things. It's all one ideological bubble and it's all female or femme presenting or at a minimum men that have chosen to be like women. It, it's always gravitating towards feminine control, but we're blaming men for it through phrases like to toxic masculinity. Arguably there's toxic femininity and that's all, but I wouldn't even say that. It's not fair to just start blaming people by gender. The truth is it's toxic society because even men can behave this way. It's toxic society expecting men in general to fit into a cookie cutter template of what a man should be. But it's not masculinity. It's more uh, abuse, really. That, that's what I would call it. I would just call it abuse. Men have largely been abused for decades, and that's just the end of that. It's abuse. It's abuse of men. That's all there is to it. It's not caring about what men really need. It's not caring about what men really feel. It's saying that men should be vulnerable when that's not true. Vulnerability means let me control you. That's not masculinity. What is her name? I can't remember her name, but if you look up on YouTube a video, it's called something like a woman becomes a man and chooses to be a woman or a woman experiences life as a man and chooses to be a woman in the end. It's about a woman, I think in the 90s, who she dressed up as a man and she started actually infiltrating male groups and became a friend with men as a man. And the problem was because she started to see that men don't work the way that they're stereotyped and that it's actually extremely unhealthy, the kind of expectations that society puts on them in general, it, it basically it broke her heart and it made her actually, <laughs> she ended up having to uh, decompress with a psychiatrist because it was so bad and she couldn't handle being a man because being a man, you know, masculinity, there's a lot to it, and society basically says if you are a man, if you are a masculine person, you're bad. If you're a masculine person, you can't be a person. You are a cog in a machine, and it drove her nuts. I've spoken way longer than I intended to about this. I hope that somewhere in this mishmash of me talking in circles that you may have vaguely gotten my point Go down to the comments and tell me how stupid I am because I don't think I did this very well. I might redo it. So go down there, give me some, uh, give me some of that spicy discussion, some suggestions for improvement. I look forward to it. Like, comment, subscribe. Go give me money on Subscribestar and Kofi and Flatter and PayPal and all that. JodyBruchon.com. Links in the description. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>